another left turn because literally, let's just be honest, boxing has so many left turns, right turns, things of that nature. But because of COVID and everything going on, we're seeing fights that supposed to happen, not happen, and then fights are happening that we normally wouldn't see in other years. So let's just keep it 100 here. We were talking hardcore about Terrence Crawford, Manny Pacquiao. Then we were talking about how Errol Spence was going to be fighting you guys because you guys got elevated WBA title. And, of course, Spence is talking about strap season. That's his tagline on Twitter. Right? He wants all the belts. He wants all the smoke. And then out of mother effing left field, August 21st, Manny Pacquiao against Errol Spence, Vegas, looking like it's going to be at the MGM Grand. And wow, Jorge. Wow. And it was it was unexpected and 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 a big thing, you know. I mean, if you if 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 you if, if, if somebody had to thank somebody on the Spence camp or the Manny Pacquiao camp, you thank Bud Crawford for not taking that fight with Pacquiao when I said it the previous episode, you should have taken it. This is hurting you, my friend. I don't no, is, let me just let me put it out there too. Let's just do a quick recap. Crawford's had bad luck and then bad, made bad mistakes because he could have had the Manny Pacquiao fight last year, but in, in the Middle East, once again, Saudi Arabia money was there. Mm -hmm. Everything was science and delivered. Then COVID happened. And then when they realized that they couldn't even get any people in, in the stands, of course, in Saudi Arabia, they was like, nah. Now, of course, things have changed now because what we know now, they would have done it with no fans. So talk about bad. We didn't know anything about COVID. You know, no. talk about hindsight is 2020. Like we're seeing now like social distancing, wearing masks. They could have done the stage list. They, they got all that oil money. They were just throwing money just to get a fight out there because they trying to increase their tourism sure. in the Middle East. They're spending. I don't know if you've seen. Don't believe the stuff that you see online that about the Millie. They are building metropolis out there. The skyscrapers are killing Chicago and New York skyscrapers. They're building buildings left and right. Yeah. Right? The infrastructure is crazy. So what do you do? You got to sell tourism. How do you sell tourism? We'll overspend to get these fights exactly. over here. That's how that's working right now. And Hindsight's 2020 and Crawford could have had this fight if we didn't have a freaking pandemic. And, and that would be just equated to bad timing. Yeah. Right? yeah I'm saying I also saying bad timing and then mistakes after that. Because we talked before our little hiatus that him and Manny were supposed to go down, and then uh, there was some there was a deal that was in place, and then the Middle East money came the Middle in. Middle East money came in, exactly. and then they threw a bigger site fee. And of course, Crawford won the bigger site fee because Manny said, "Nah, I'm gonna I'm a change it up." And I can understand how Crawford said his prince was like, "Nah, how you gonna switch it up?" You know. And then I heard that you know Crawford was on board the Manny. At the end of the day, though, when it comes to work with Manny Pacquiao. He is a future Hall of Famer. If you have a contract, he's one of those guys that if you're not an A-side, if you're not Floyd Mayweather, what you're not, and if you get a chance of Manny Pacquiao, sign that contract as fast as possible. Uh, uh, if the numbers are legit, it may not be what you're looking for, but if it's legit, sign it because he's going to do some stuff and run off another way. Uh, uh, and what happened, Jorge? He ran the other way. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is that, Granted, the numbers changed, right? You had your prelim numbers. You weren't, you didn't sign to that right away. And then he changed it again on you. We've had this conversation. We had the conversation just over the phone. I said it even in our last episode a couple of weeks back. You needed this for negotiating power. So you were, you needed to stop thinking about the short term, which was that of exact fight. You needed to think long term for a Spence fight, right? If you mm -hmm. want that Spence fight at 147 and you've been, you know, letting put a draw a line in the sand about 50 50 with, with Errol Spence. You needed that Pacquiao fight, a win against Pacquiao, to basically not just get the belt, to basically have the negotiating power to suggest, hey, I have Manny Pacquiao's win on my ledger. Mm -hmm. Let's do 50-50. That is the fact that you allowed, and I'm going to say you allowed, Bud Crawford, Errol Spence to scoop up what you essentially passed on. It's never going to happen with Errol Spence at 50-50. Let's put it out here. Whatever we can say, I mean, Bob Arum's a Hall of Fame promoter. He's put on some of the greatest fights in boxing history, yep. right? Whatever is going on between him and ESPN money, let's just put it out there. Errol Spence, Al Heyman. Al Heyman takes care of his fighters. The, it, that it, legacy money's there at CBS. I know that. That's what but, it is. But you got to have someone to negotiate to get that money, yep. though. And we have still to this day, have we ever seen a fighter say any ill will about al Heyman. no no the fighters and get paid they get paid and the fights that we can get mad that you no know, fights get marinated. part i hate to say it's part of boxing bob arum created the marinating term 
Like some people say, listen, he was the one that kept coining marinating. He coined the marinade. This I said he didn't start it, but he coined it so hardcore where people follow that too as well. But he's getting his guys the fights that they want when they want them, and he's getting them paid when they want I, to. It, it, and it, no it, one's complaining. My my only beef with Al Heyman is on, from a fan perspective. It's not the fights. The fights don't happen when I want them as the fan. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's more on when they I want it, and and that that's where my and, beef and, is. At. And Other that's than the that, and then the problem though is that boxing's a business first, a sports. Segment. Exactly. So so to me, I I get I, Al Heyman. I get him. kudos to him for getting mm -hmm. his fighters paid and stuff. Kudos to the fighters for recognizing where you can get your money at and stuff. As a fight fan and a, as a follower of boxing, I I. Couldn't stand it. Saying all that now, who wins? Spencer Pacquiao. The I have to say Spence because he's fought at least recently more than Pacquiao. Pacquiao's gonna be on a while. He fought in two years. The last time Pacquiao fought, once again, an undefeated welterweight in Keith Thurman. Mm -hmm. Say what people who want to nitpick me, I give Manny Pacquiao props. I mean, at this point in the game right now. I can see, I, I, of course, Floyd gave a jab to Manny this weekend because he's like, I'm about to make all this money and Manny's still fighting guys like Spence. I don't need to fight guys like Spence. And I can understand it because Floyd's like, I'm thinking smarter, not harder. I'm not going to get my ass whooped from, by Errol Spence now, right now. Let Manny take that for 25, 30 million when I can make 70 million Logan Paul, right? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to go there, but I'm saying all that to say, man, Manny. Yeah, I mean, you took care. Of, basically, you did to Keith Thurman hey, what winner, nobody else did at that point. Hey, I'm gonna say this: win or lose, you taking on Arrow Spence, that check must be nice because at was it Floyd's 44, Manny's 42, going on 43. You're gonna fight a prime Arrow Spence when you've been out for almost two and a half years. The betting money says Errol Spence. I, hey, I, you I, have to put it all on Errol Spence. At I this am point. betting Spence. I'm just, I, you know what though? Admit, I'm just gonna, I'm just giving him applause because he's taking on a challenge that he don't need to take. Exactly. You're right. at this age and at this time of his life. I gotta give, I gotta give respect where respects due. He doesn't. You're right. He doesn't need that fighter. No, he's a whole. He's he's an eight division champion. He don't need Spence on his resume. Now I will say this though. If he somehow pulls an upset <laughs> and beats Arrow Spence, I'm not saying that he's better than Floyd because Floyd, the head to head matchup, proved it. Mm -hmm. I got to say it. But all time, man, know, I, 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 almost, I would say he, if he I mean, let me ask a question here. Hey, I, I hear I, 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 he's not better than May Mayweather, but like all time great, you, you, that ranking there I was and, and the resume. Like, like I say, when you have that head to head, you can't say that guy's better than him. But then when you look at, when you're comparing them, you're going to be like, hey, man, M Manny did some things in his 40s that Floyd didn't even touch. M Manny, right now, if he was, is he a first battle Hall of Famer? Hell yeah. With Spence, I will say that. With Spence, it's a guarantee. No, he's already his first battle yeah, Hall of Famer. Yeah. I'm just saying, this is one, this is the fight that puts you, you're already all time great, right? This is the kind of fight that makes you a myth. You're right about that. <laughs> you're right. The, you the, know, the, I, I get what you're saying on that. I get what you're you saying. Because you, what's going to happen here is that it, it's legend. Basically, it's, it's le it, it, it becomes legendary. I, I want to say this here because what's going to happen is we're going to go 10, 15 years from now, right? Revisionist history. We're going to look back at people's careers, and then we're going to say, "Man, we were looking for that 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 Errol Spence, Terence Crawford fight, and then out of left field, you know, man, Manny at 42, 43 years old." Beat a prime Arrow Spence and became the literally undisputed welterweight champion because one belt left. And then he probably would fight Crawford at that point. Then he can get, then Crawford would take the L. Probably he'll figure that out to get become undisputed then, you know. But come, I mean, that this would put Manny so far in mythological legend. Like he would win the president of the Philippines. He, he, and, I mean, like they love Dirk K on there. That dude, he he don't have, he he'll cut a dude's hands off. He'll cut the head off. You could be the utmost Christian, and he he'll cut a leg off, and then they'll say, "All praise to God." He yeah. he is that much love of his violent na nature, right? Yep. Dirk would just hand the keys to Manny. I think he probably opened the door for him. He would get his knee pads. 
he loves that man so much. He he's he's openly talk. I mean, I don't know. You guys don't think, think I, I follow Philippine politics, but yeah, he's openly talk about handing the reins to Manny. He's like, yo, when I'm done, it's gonna be Manny's country. He he's already he's already in there. He him and Manny boy, he they they like this, you know. He's already getting ready for yeah, Manny. Already, it's already, it's, it's, like Manny's country. Yeah, he's yeah. ready to oh, see yeah. the raids. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just saying though that. I, I I talk it will about Manny. I've had and here's the thing though, I do that because no athlete's exempt from criticism. Yep. I'm not special. I'm just saying that hey, I'm just a nerd who watch things and I will I, not everybody's perfect. I'm a fan of Floyd and I criticize him. I talk, you know, easily, you know. But this is the situation that as great as a first bout Hall of Famer, he's an all-time great. I can say Manny's top 20 all time. I will say that as much as I give him criticism. You can make an argument in top 20 all-time boxing history. You can make an argument, put this thing. You could make an argument top 15. I didn't say top 10 because there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys in the yeah, top yeah. 10. You got yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and who knows what could happen with but, but a Spence win? Ooh. Ooh. You know, I would eat a lot of crow. I would say I talk a lot of crap about Manny, but you know what, though? I will not say nothing about Manny ever again unless it comes about money because he's still bad with money. Well, that's different. Right? <laughs> so outside of being bad from bad with money and stuff, just boxing wise, yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. That that's that's your fanboy and Spence right there. That's, yeah, uh, hey, right. I gotta keep it 100 though. I've been rocking with Spence since he was eight and no. I've been rocking with him since no one know who he was, and he was sitting there talking to me. And Pop, I'm gonna keep saying me and Pops was talking to him, and people didn't know he was, and he wanted to talk to me because we were just talking boxing. Me being the nerd that I am, and I'm just as you know, of course, I'm about ten years older than him, and he wanted to sit there and talk to me. I'm like, nah, dude, you in the ring? Hey, man, I'm, I'm bored. Let's let's talk. There's a fight going on, man. Hey, so that's my man, fifty grand. I'm I I just want to know. I am rooting for Spence, but with Manny winning. Hey man, hey. That's all I gotta say. Hey. So 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 question here, question here going for the for the fans here that are watching our show and stuff like that. So you would actually eat crow if if Manny won that fight against Prince. Would you eat crow on our live recording for the fans? Here's the thing, though. It has to be a legit win. It can't be no controversy. Mm. Can't be con. Here, I got I got I got I, I hate to say that you know, Dave. No, no, no. Nah. Because boxing is known for some bad, questionable judging. So I am not going to subject myself to not crow. judging, not judging, not judging. Let me give you, let me give you an example here. What's controversy? Okay. There was a controversy is Canelo Triple G one scoring. If okay, that, that's controversy from a scoring perspective. Okay. So he gets a punch in at a moment where Spence slips on his foot. The punch connects. He puts one glove on the ground. Jaw ref calls it a knockdown. Oh, that's 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 part of the boxing game. Baby. No, that happens. It's it happens. Split second. It's not gonna be no replays and on those that. Those are 50-50. Exactly. Always a split that, second. That is one thing. I'm talking like Adelaide Birds 118 to 10 oh, to one ten Canelo Triple G giving to Canelo saying that Canelo won ten rounds to two when we thought it was like Triple G eight to four and or, I, or six six minimum. And, and, and I wanted to say this for a long time, Adelaide Bird. What the hell were you thinking that night? And, what and the I, hell were you watching? And real talk, real fast, Adelaide Bird's one of the best. I mean, like she's had questionable. But she's been a Vegas and just boxing judge for decades. Matter of fact, I think Ali Bird is actually married or is involved with a uh, referee, um, one of the older black referee. Not um, uh, there's only three of them that we see all the time. Weeks, uh, there's weeks. Yeah, weeks. I think she, I think I, I don't don't quote me on this, but I thought I saw something that her and Weeks are are together. So it's like. <laughs> So you know it's a bo boxers and they're boxing all boxing gossip guys. Yeah, in the book column. I'm just saying though. So I was <laughs> like, yo, you you've been judging for decades. Uh, we've seen her in major fights. We've seen her get yeah. good scorecards. And if I hey, don't quote me. I thought I. I need to double check it for the next show. If your man is one of the top referees in the game, you can't be putting no 118, 110 scores out here like that. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it can't be no controversy. We, Weeks, Weeks wasn't the referee for that first fight, was it? Was the other. Um... I can't remember. I don't know if it was Weeks or if it was my man, um, you know, who does all the main Floyd fights. I can't think of his name. He lives in Vegas now, too. Yeah, I, I, know I, think... I know he's. I, his name's on the tip oh, of my tongue. And God, I, can't remember. I can't think of it right now. But yeah, he's the top, he's the top ref in the game. I can't. He's a skinny, uh, more medium tone brother that I can't think of. He was, of. A, yeah. I know. Yeah. He was the one that did the uh, Ramirez Taylor fight. Yeah, yeah. So, but. That's what I'm saying. I would eat crow. It's, it's a legit like box. Or I, I hate to put parameters on there, but 
I just have to see a legit win where I own it. If it's a cons, like, nah, I don't care. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. So, fine. Legit fight altogether. Legit beat down. Okay. So. Hey, Crow, when I say Crow, if a close win's a close win, I'm saying beat down. Okay. Like, if he did not, he schools him. Like, he has a rewind ally submission to show Shane Mosley against Antonio, Antonio Margarito. Margarito yeah, yeah. That is my classic example, good example of right a now. guy who is a Hall of Fame fighter who's thought is on the down end and was basically being served up for Margarito for a good win to catapult him up to superstardom. And you, you turn the clock now back, and then you get that big win to get the Floyd fight. That's Spence right now. That's Manny and Spence right now because it, it, it could be two big fights for Manny. He can win this one and get the Crawford fight. Or Spence beats, beats him and passes the torch, and Spence is the pay-per-view king. Mm -hmm. That's what we got here. Yeah, and, that, and, and you said the, the last part being the, the, is what got me right there, right? Passes the he beats Spence, beats Pacquiao, the torch gets passed on. That was you, Bud Crawford. <coughs> I, I, I'm giving you crap because that was supposed to be you. Last thing with that. If when this happens now, and if if I don't say if when, whatever how you, the betting favorite is gonna be Errol Spence. There is no 50-50 talk for Crawford Spence. If Spence has three belts, beats Manny Pacquiao, is the pay-per-view king. It's just finances now. It's just commerce, finances, numbers. I don't care Negotiating how. Negotiating power, all that. Talk, Terrence girls. Crawford turns into the Bernard Hopkins of our time when you're a great fighter who cannot make the big money. You're not the A-side. Even if he beats the A-side, he would never be an A-side fighter. Hopkins beat De La Hoya. They didn't pass the torch to De La I mean, De Hopkins, did it? Nope. To certain fighters like Floyd, he had the personality to get that to get that torch from Manny. I mean, from uh, Oscar. Mm -hmm. Same thing from Manny. He got that that torch pass when you beat that guy. Certain guys, you beat that guy, you don't get that torch in 2004. That was in 2004 when Hopkins beat De La Hoya. He didn't get that torch. Greatest Crawford is, he ain't going to get that torch. Especially with right now, with Spence right now. But that happens. So any 50-50 talk, Jorge, that we've talked about, nah, it's gone. 60-40 that Spence put out there, that's the minimum now. So and we mentioned real fast that this could do a million pay-per-view buys. If this does a million pay-per-view buys, or on the low end, I mentioned 750 in the I low say, end. I say a million easily. Yeah. I see it's got to be a million. Yeah. I say in the low end, 750, there is 60-40 is kind of out of the question. Because I've mentioned before, Crawford said one pay-per-view. And he really did a hundred thousand. I think it did like ninety one pay per view buys, right? One pay per view. Spence is only on pay per view now. He is fighting guys on names. Is like, yo, he put three hundred thousand on this one here. You get a many fighting it. So I just wanted to end on that. Bro, I'll let you comment. If it does a million, Crawford's just gonna have to take whatever contract that comes his way. And now that we and and, and the reason I wanted to, so you made a great point at the end right there. So this is the part one when he segue to. Crawford, what we've talked about this yesterday and talked about a little bit today. What the hell does he do from here if there's anything even, even for him to do at 147? Because we've talked about, yeah, there's a possibility right that Spence is going to go to 154 a lot sooner than maybe Crawford. one of them will go to 154, so they're going to see each other next the division, exactly. But so, this is where I suggested Crawford should start looking at fights at 154 now. But, if, you, if you're not getting anything at 147, you're not, you're not, I don't want to see you fight Danny Garcia, it's not, not going to do it for me. You're not going to fight Porter yep. because you guys have talked about it and mm -hmm. you guys are not going to have that fight. So right now it ain't Spence and it ain't Pacquiao. Who is he going to get at 154, though? Yeah, that, he needs to get started somewhere. He needs no, no, to get but, but here's somewhere. the problem, though. I said everything's lined up for Spence and it's all bad for Crawford because who has three of the 154 belts right now? We just mentioned. He, he can't get a belt there. Jamel Charlo, who is going for the fourth belt against Castanano, I think, in about two weeks. In a couple weeks, yep. Yeah, so he's going to be the undisputed guy on Showtime CBS on the PBC side, and Crawford's Bob Aram even said, I can't afford the, these fights here with the PBC like that. So he gets 154. There's no belts to fight for. He's not at, 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 for Crawford. I would say he needs to start warming up at 154. He's not gonna get a belt at 154, right? He, not, not right away, but he needs to start looking at 154. I think sooner and get start, you know, start making some adjustments at 154. He got to get there, there and make himself a mandatory so that if he yeah. does do that and then spends still at 147, he could probably fight Jamel Charlo to try to force that purse bid. That's going to be his only situation because what's going to happen here? Let's say Spence beats Manny, yeah. gets three of the belts. Then the negotiation is going to happen. And then, like, he's like, no, nah, it's not 50 50. I'm going to 154. I might do one more fight, you know, 147. And I go 154. Jamel's with me at PBC. 
And so then he's the undisputed. So not only do I have the Manny fight, then I can go and be clearly undisputed 154. And then that happened and Crawford goes 154. Where's the money negotiating there? That it ain't Crawford be looking at 30%. So agree with everything you said up to that point. So the contract with Top Rank expires this October, right? So mm-hmm. whatever, so whatever happens between Crawford and that's he, huge, though. If he joins PBC down the road, then 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 he's kind of in the mix for that. But for him right now, there's nobody for him to really fight at 147. Right, like that, and no one at 154 now. No, nope, nobody. But he needs to get started somewhere. So at this point, if you're not willing to take the pack, the Virgil fight, Ortiz of the world, he's going to have to fight. And, and, and I'm not exactly kind of eager to see that fight. I'm not. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, mean I'm not. I, I mean, I want to see. But I like, like Virgil Ortiz, but maybe in about a year and a half. It's, it's, it's like the the lower. And by that time, he's at 154. Anything past Pacquiao at this point is a consolation prize, and I think of the I think Ortiz is the smaller end of the consolation prize. Is that something that's gonna basically, you know, start raising eyebrows and stuff? Oh, he's gonna fight Ortiz. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't do anything. Because right? do you, you beat a young fighter who wasn't ready yet. That's what's gonna happen. Now. Exactly. So, and me, we know he's not ready yet. Exactly. So, to me, Crawford go to one fifty four. You're not gonna fight for anybody, but start getting a fight or two. Start yeah. working your start building a resume at 154. Start working out whatever kinks you need to at 154. Who knows? Maybe it's not even the weight for you, but you gotta at least find out because at 147, mm. you just turned on your biggest fight. Pacquiao was it. And at this point, you're you're gonna be the one on a holding pattern. Yeah. And you're in a bad Let's, spot. And you and this last one, you did this to yourself. So you need to start thinking the rest of the year what I need to do. 154 he, sounds right to me. He's a three division champion, undefeated. With no dance partners. With none. I mean, like Virgil Ortiz, maybe. And after you look at that, he's going to have to jump ship and go to PBC Showtime. I don't even see anybody at the zone at 147-124 because Castanano's got the one belt and there he's coming to Showtime to fight Charlo for that. So... He's gonna have to leave. It's a situation he's gonna have to leave Bob Aram, but then his egos decide that he still thinks he's entitled to a certain amount of money. So even if he comes to Al Heyman's side, who's to say he's gonna get the fight still because he still thinks he's entitled to that money? And I, and I know we need to move on. And I, yeah, I, I, I want to hear your last thought on this one. I'll let you have the final thought on this one. But think about it though, Bob, let's say that he's jumped ship, but Spence, like, no. We got the same promoter, but you don't get 50-50. That's still a manager-manager conversation with Al Heyman. Then it's 60-40. I don't want 60-40. Then you're on PBC, and you're still ain't fighting. Then only you're only fighting Danny Garcia and Sean Porter because that fight can happen now because you don't have to share promoters, but you ain't getting Spence. You know no. what I'm saying? So I, let me let me get let me hear your final thought before we got to move on. So sure. Yeah. That. In this case, I mean that that's exactly goes right back to like the Roy Jones uh, Hopkins uh, fiasco right there. This time I said, oh time, yeah, this time this is Spence going <laughs> 70 30. I'm gonna whoop your ass. 70 yeah. 30. I'm gonna whoop your. That that's exactly gonna come from Spence and and mm-hmm. and, and, and Spence beats Pacquiao. I like it. Like said, he's said gonna that. he's gonna say 70 30. I'm gonna whoop your ass. That's exactly what he's gonna say. So to me, Crawford is he's, he's, he's in a he's in a bind. He, he put himself in a bind on this one, and whatever decision he makes, I just don't see it at 147 for no. me. So I don't, to, I don't see it at 147. It's going to be hard at 154. It'll be hard at 154, but at this point, he needs to start make, start figuring out what the track he's going to make. If you really want Spence, no matter what, it's going to be 70-30. You just need to decide whether you want to fight Spence at 147 or at 154. You make the call on that one because basically mm-hmm. you, you can go up and wait right now and make the case for 154. Or you stay at 147, tweedling your thumbs. You fight Ortiz because that's probably the easier fight you can make in top rank.